Top 10 Formerly Powerful Ancient Cities That Once Ruled In the early days of humankind, gathering together in tiny groups provided various advantages. Hunting, gathering food, and taking care of the weak became easier. Above all, living in groups made it easier for people to survive. As agriculture spread throughout our species, these groups grew in size. By not having to outrun prey or rely heavily on luck when scavenging for food, we was able to divert our attention. As grain and animal harvests increased, settlements expanded and became self-sufficient. Some of these settlements turned into genuine centers of commerce, power, and culture, depending on their environment, circumstances, and a little bit of luck. Number 10 Venice Italy The 4th century AD saw chaos throughout Europe. The fall of the Western Roman Empire. Germanic tribes, Huns, and other marauders pillaged and conquered the towns of northeastern Italy. The Italians searched for safety elsewhere, among some marshy islands close to the Adriatic Sea beach, since there were no hills nearby. The islands were perfect for a short-term residence, but not at all suitable for permanent settlement. Despite the scarcity of fresh water on the islands, the inhabitants of these communities rapidly learned that they could generate salt and potable water by boiling sea water. For the colony, the so-called edible gold became a crucial resource. The refugees realized right away that the islands provided a lot more peace and protection than the destroyed mainland. Unfortunately, most of the ground they were standing on was mud and sand, which is not ideal for the foundation of big buildings. The first Venetians established a solid foundation for their future residences, places of business, and even castles by burying countless numbers of wooden pillars deep within the earth. The Venetians found island life to be comfortable, and they quickly became well known for their expertise in shipbuilding and navigation. Venice naturally became the richest city in Western Europe and the commercial hub of the Mediterranean after conquering Constantinople, thanks to the salt trade. Number 9 Palembang Indonesia Similar to Venice, the Sumatran island's Palembang city flourished due to its ideal location for trade. The Indian Ocean trade, which spanned the sea and connected Africa to China via the Middle East, India, and Southeast Asia, was much more extensive than the Silk Road on the peninsula. Prices were established completely by the merchants themselves, unlike in European-style business. With the exception of a few instances of piracy, no armed convoys were necessary for trade. Between the 7th and the 12th centuries, this was how the Srivijaya Empire grew to power. This kingdom, which controlled the Malay Peninsula and the Indonesian islands, flourished as a result of its control over the Strait of Malacca. Palembang, the Srivijaya nation's capital, was close to the strait. In its early years, Indian culture and religion had a significant impact on the city. Because so many Muslim merchants used the strait, Islam rose to prominence by the end of the empire. Majapahit took over Palembang, which had been ruled by Chinese traders up until the 16th century, after the Srivijayan empire collapsed. The Palembang Jerusalem Sultanate then used it as its administrative center. 62% of the world's Muslims today reside in Southeast Asia, courtesy to the Indian Ocean trade and the beachside resort of Palembang. Number 8 Eridu Iraq The ancient Sumerians believed that the city of Eridu, also known as the home of the gods, was the first city ever built by humanity. It is without a doubt quite old. Nowadays, all that remains of Eridu is a desolate wasteland and windswept ruins. In what was once a prosperous nation, Eridu was established around 5400 BC near to the banks of the Euphrates River in southeast Iraq. The Eridu Genesis, which was written around 2300 BC, makes mention of this fabled paradise. Legend has it that the god Enki punished Tag Tug the weaver for eating a forbidden fruit. In another story, a different man, Utnapishtim, builds a large boat in line with the gods' instructions to save the seed of life and escape a great flood. A layer of soil and silt measuring 2.5 meters and dating to 2800 BC has been discovered during archaeological digs close to the city of Eridu. This layer is peculiar to the Euphrates River. The massive ziggurat of Amar Sin, which is located in the center of the city, is thought by many academics to be the Tower of Babel that is truly mentioned in the Book of Genesis. The ancient historian Barassa seems to be describing Eridu when he wrote about Babylon. 
The home of the gods was completely abandoned sometime around 600 BC for unknown reasons. That does not preclude the possibility that Eridu functioned as a model for later human civilization. Number 7 Thebes Egypt Ancient Egypt is a never-ending source of intrigue and inspiration for both historians and non-historians. There are currently many artifacts from this civilization on display in museums all around the world. While mammoths were still wandering the earth freely, these prehistoric humans who lived along the Nile River in northeastern Africa reached the height of their culture and prosperity. The Egyptians were once a significant social and economic force. Thebes remained their center of culture despite the repeated changes in their government and religion. The sun deity Amon is worshipped in the bulk of the magnificent temples and monuments in this city, which is both a home for the living and the dead. Thebes, which is now called Luxor, was historically the capital of the Egyptian Empire and was near to both the notorious Karnak Temple Complex and the well-known Valley of the Kings. The fact that this city-state was home to both religious and laic establishments and made a lasting impression on Egyptian history is true, even though many people argue that Thebes was the most important of all the Egyptian capitals. Number 6 Karakorum Mongolia Originating in East Asia, the Mongols were a once-dominant nomadic race that created an empire unlike any other. These people traveled the continent on horseback with their herds of horses while living in yurts. By the time their children were three years old, they were already learning how to ride a horse and fire a bow and arrow before they could walk or talk properly. After bringing all of the Mongolian tribes together and creating the biggest land empire ever, Genghis Khan began construction on Karakorum in AD 1220. This would serve as his main operations base. This city-state was initially intended to preserve the Mongols' nomadic way of life. It was originally made up of yurts and wooden houses. Its location was much more important to Genghis Khan and his warriors than its design or aesthetic appeal. Located close to the Orkan River, 360 kilometers southwest of Ulaanbaatar, the current capital of Mongolia, Karakorum served as an important rest point on the Silk Road. Given the significance of the Orkan River Valley to the people, it served as a place of worship and a safety net. By the 1230s, the capital had begun to grow and transform from a collection of yurts into something more substantial following the death of Genghis Khan and the rise to power of his son Ogade. Ogade built a wall around the city and a palace surrounded by 64 wooden columns. The narrative of the Franciscan William of Rubruck has given us a full knowledge of life in Karakorum. He depicted it as a significant hub for trade and craft while having just 10,000 inhabitants. Craftsmen were brought from all across the realm to Karakorum in order to better serve the Khan. Additionally, according to Rubruk, there are 12 temples, including two mosques for Muslims, a church for Christians, as well as Confucian, Buddhist, and shamanistic temples. Kublai Khan, a descendant of Genghis, established the Yuan dynasty in China after moving the imperial capital to Kanbalik, modern-day Beijing, in 1267. During this time, Karakorum rapidly lost influence before being overthrown by the Chinese in AD 1388. Number 5 Great Zimbabwe Zimbabwe Though the African continent is where humanity first emerged, shockingly little is known about its ancient history. There are several cultures, traditions, and customs practiced there by the more than 1 billion inhabitants. Undoubtedly, there are still many artifacts buried there. During the push of European nations to control the entire planet, archaeologists found a gigantic stone complex in the heart of contemporary Zimbabwe, around 550 kilometers from the coast of eastern Africa. The edifice was mistakenly credited to the native Africans rather than the Muslims, Persians, Indians, or possibly the Chinese. The archaeologists thought that they could not have been produced by the African people themselves. According to recent research, the Shona inhabitants of the area designed the complex. They seem to have been involved in the Great Zimbabwe sites building about the year 1100. The city was the kingdom's administrative center for the following 400 years. Indicating that Great Zimbabwe, not the other way around, is where the country gets its name, the word Zimbabwe stems from a phrase that means stone homes. A copper Muslim coin from Great Zimbabwe's ruins connects the Shona monarchs to the international Indian Ocean trade. Given the limited information available, 
It appears that Great Zimbabwe was a prosperous city with access to a wide range of raw materials and trade goods, including gold, ivory, rhinoceros horns, and lumber. These would be sent down the Save and Limpopo rivers all the way to the shore. The precious shipment would then make its way north to Arabia, perhaps stopping in China or India en route. This city was once home to more than 25,000 people, but it is now entirely deserted. Its cause of death is still a mystery. Others blame political unrest, others blame poverty, and yet others blame the drying up of the gold mines. However, Great Zimbabwe still stands as evidence of the incredible secrets that Africa has managed to conceal from the rest of the world. Number 4 Hattusa Turkey When Homer penned the Iliad and the Odyssey, the Hittite Empire was at its height of grandeur. Hattusa, the capital of the Hittite Kingdom, was a prosperous metropolis humming with trade and passengers from far places when King Agamemnon of the Greeks invaded the great city of Troy. Hattusa was home to the indigenous Hatti people as early as 2400 BC following the fall of the Hatti people in 1700 BC, Hittite King Hattusili rebuilt the city and named it the imperial capital. Over the years, these new monarchs engaged in various interactions with neighbors including the Mitanians, Assyrians, and Egyptians. The troops of King Muwatali II and Pharaoh Ramses II halted in the historic Battle of Kadesh in the year 1274 BC. Then, peace was achieved when the two nations signed a peace agreement on a clay tablet. There was calm before the collapse of the Hittite kingdom. A copy of this historic first peace agreement between two nations is currently on display at the UN offices in New York City. The Phrygians assaulted the capital city at the end of the 12th century BC and entirely destroyed it. Hattusa will never again be able to display the beauty that it once did under the Hittites despite the fact that the sites were only restored and reconstructed sometime between the 7th and 9th centuries AD. Number 3 Chan Chan Peru The capital city of the Chimu Empire, which ruled over what is now northern Peru, was Chan Chan. It was the largest city built before the arrival of the Spanish and was almost entirely made of adobe bricks. A period that can be traced back to AD 850 came to an end when the Inca captured the Chimu capital in AD 1470. The area where Chan Chan was discovered is one of the most inhospitable deserts on earth. Chan Chan's main plaza was embellished with nine different defensive citadels. Each person had their own personal temples, palaces, gardens, graves, and water reservoirs. Chan Chan had nine different walled citadels, each with its own temples, palaces, gardens, cemeteries, and water reservoirs. It also had 20 square kilometers of residential area. The Chimu people prepared for a battle that never took place because they thought Incan weapons could not be defeated. After that, people started gradually emigrating to Cusco, the Incan capital. When the Spanish arrived, the city had already been abandoned, but some rare artifacts and hints had been left behind. For instance, the silver-covered entryway was found by the Europeans. More than $2 million is now being paid for this doorway. To thoroughly drain the city of its resources, the Spanish established mining companies. Because Chan Chan is mostly made of adobe, water and other external forces eventually deteriorate the bricks. This old city is currently under threat of disappearing. Number 2 Shen China One of the six ancient Chinese capitals, Shen was home to the majority of the ruling dynasties, including the Han and Qin. Emperor Qin Shi Huang, the creator of the Qin dynasty, had a collection of the renowned terracotta warriors. China used to have a rigid social structure. This initially assisted the nation's advancement but ultimately contributed to its downfall. At a time when the entire world was steeped in sorrow, ignorance, and cruelty, China was leading the march toward philosophy, science, and technology. They created several items that we today take for granted, such as paper, money, gunpowder, and many more. The Silk Road took its name from Silk, another Chinese invention. This road that connected the East and the West served as the impetus for the creation of Shen. Caravans laden with a variety of goods and resources left the city on their journey down the Silk Road to the West. But maybe more importantly, they introduced new ideas and advancements that improved living conditions throughout the rest of the world. Two million people, a record for the 9th century, 
resided in Shen. Number 1 Pataliputra India Chandragupta, a local Indian ruler, was motivated to build his own empire when Alexander the Great extended the borders of his brief empire from Greece to modern-day India. This king had nearly total authority over present-day India, Pakistan, and eastern Afghanistan when he began suppressing local tribes. Chandragupta founded the Mauryan Empire in 326 BC after driving the final Greeks from his realm. The hub of his recently founded dominion was Pataliputra. Several tourists and embassies, some Greek and some Chinese, visited the city and praised it as a wealthy, law-abiding metropolis. Buddhists and Hindus lived side by side, and hospitals provided medical attention to everyone who needed it, including the most vulnerable sections of society. Early buildings in the city were mostly composed of wood. During Emperor Ashoka's rule, the city began to see the emergence of stone constructions, 273-232 BC. Ashoka erected animal hospitals all across the city and outlawed sport hunting. Pataliputra was unquestionably the birthplace of Indian civilization and is easily comparable to Rome and Shen in terms of strength and significance.